Hi, everybody. How are you doing? I hope everybody is well today. Welcome to the personal development and training uh, session. Today, we're doing a wonderful personal development. So just to let you know, personal development is to learn more about a leader, our leader's life, how they transitioned through adversity, how they progressed in their personal development, and learn what they must do to assure a continuous forward momentum in their life. To realize that they are just normal people like you and me um, by sharing their stories and perhaps it can inspire you to how you can traverse through your life and eventually create your story as you become a leader. So with that being said, I would love, I just so am overjoyed to welcome my dear friend, Stacy Phillips. She is going to be our personal development trainer today. Stacy, hi. Hello. <laughs> I'm excited to be on. <laughs> this is going to be so good. So everybody, so I was just so blessed. To spend about almost a week's time with Stacy um, when I went to Houston back in was it July I think, um, and just absolutely thoroughly enjoyed her company, her love, her compassion, her heart, her mind, and most of all her light. She's like this little fairy that just flits from side to side, just sharing her joy. So thank you again, Stacy. So Stacy, I've already mentioned where you come from. You're you're in Houston, Texas. So you know. Anything that, but, but what people may not know is, you know, you just don't do just LifeWave. You actually have a lot of education in the health field. Can you share with everybody a little bit about that? I I do. I actually, uh, because you asked me to put together, I sat down and actually went and pulled all my license. And I thought, wow, I'm smarter than I thought. <laughs> So, um, but I, I mean, cause I just, I love education, so I don't utilize a lot of this. So I kind of had forgotten, but I have a, um, certified health, I'm a certified health specialist, a certified natural health professional. I have a doctor of naturopath. I have a, a license in na na uh, neuromuscular massage therapy. I also have a um, certificate in business life coach. And I just had just got my associate's degree not that long ago, like maybe this summer. <laughs> oh so, I love it. See, I, I don't know. If, I'm sure a lot of people that are on here, they're also been in the health field. And, you know, we had a lot in common because it's like we get addicted, right? It's like, oh, that looks good. Oh, I want to go do that. And wow, I, I'm so an honor that you're here with us today. I mean, that is quite a list. And I'm sure you're like, you know, when you like you just said, you look at that list like, wow, I've been busy. <laughs> I have. I didn't realize. <laughs> and and that was all later in my years, too. It wasn't recent. Yeah, yeah. And you also have your single parent, too. I am. I'm a single parent. Um I'm kind of an empty nester. She's home for the summer. Um, she was in Paraguay last year to learn Spanish. She spent the year there. And uh, so now she's home till a few more weeks. And then she's headed off to Spain for college. Spain. Oh, too bad we didn't mix it, mix it just right. She could have overlapped and seen uh, um, Peter and, and Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> So you have quite a story, and so I'm very honored, and everybody will understand as Stacy continues to share her actual life story, because it is, it's it's here, guys. I mean, Stacy's here anyway, so you might want to get your napkins ready for some, for some teary-eyed moments. Perhaps, I don't know how deep you're going to go, Stacy, but <laughs> wrench them. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you start from the beginning? So where were you born and what was, you know, what was your childhood like? So I was born originally, I was, I was born in Atlanta, Georgia, but I only spent a couple years of my life in Atlanta, Georgia. My whole family lives there, but my my parents decided to move and first we moved to North Carolina. And uh, so that's kind of where my memories of my first story, you know, my life started in a, a sense. And so, um, you know, I, uh, the beginning of my years, I was in a very religious home, very Southern Baptist. We couldn't wear pants, uh, uh, just extremely religious. And um, 
but then somewhere in that transition of religion and coming out of religion, my uh, mother, um, and I don't know when, but she uh, became, started drinking and uh, became an alcoholic and quite an abusive um, person. And, um, but they would put us on the church bus every week and we'd go off to the Southern Baptist church. And, um, I know even though it was quite a strict thing, it really gave me a foundation for, um, you know, really working hard to try to do what was right in my life. I mean, it's a, probably a negative and a positive <laughs> and because it, you know, it was, a it was a good thing because I, I always tried to choose what was the best and, and try to choose what was right, but it was probably a lot of condemnation choosing too. Yeah. And, uh, so then um, from there, you know, I, I really became, gained a love for God and who he was. And it kept me very um, comfort when I needed that, you know, through my years. And, um, you know, my brother and sister would tell you that I got the worst end of the stick because uh, when she said, do this, I would do that. <laughs> and I always was my own. Woo, you know, and which is not very good, but, um, you know, I was a very typical middle child and, uh, and I just loved to do whatever was the opposite of what I was told and, um, but also stay in those boundaries. And so that kind of took me through my childhood, but because I was, you know, a little bit rebellious to, to, you know, to some degree, um, you know, I, um, I uh, kind of just did my own little thing and I wasn't really ca caring about education. I was just caring about fun. I still care about fun. And <laughs> that carried into my adult years too. And, uh, but that's where I was. I didn't care about education and my teachers realized it too. I was living in a small town, plus my parents moved us around and all kinds of stuff. And, and so education was very hard because different schools, different areas teach differently. And so they would just pass me along because it was better to just move me up than deal with me another year. And so by 10th grade year, I was really struggling to kind of move forward. So I ended up quitting school. And also because I was an alcoholic home, very abusive, I decided I didn't want to be there anymore. So at 16, I moved out and moved on my own okay so let me just take for a pause for a moment because I want to honor your childhood I mean this couldn't be easy I mean one you were in a very strict I mean Baptist is known to be very strict and confining when it comes to religious you know trainings and whatnot I mean that's not a, a negative things in a lot of sense of it but to fall into you know alcoholic household with a lot of abuse that was focused on you sounds like and thank god for your personality to rebel and basically talk to the hand attitude which i would say that's probably what saved you um and then you moved out early as early as 16 on your own holy cow stacy that's a lot on the young shoulders i mean i'm thinking about my 16 year old there's no way she could have you know done that so kudos to you seriously so continue yeah. but i want to honor that that stage of your life well, that's what I, I look at my kids and I just think, oh my gosh, no way they could have ever done this. And um, so, you know, but I was, I worked full time and, and, uh, and I always put the morning shift because I just wanted to get work done. So I'd go play. <laughs> and, and so you always got to have play in there. Mm -hmm. And um, so then at 18, uh, just barely 18, I married uh, an, a gentleman that was a few years older than me uh, by six years. So he was, he was in college and he was transitioning into that next level. And I was just barely 18. So I turned 18 June the 3rd and July the 22nd, I, we got married. And then in a year and a half later, we had our, um, Sorry. we had our son. Oops. Sorry. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, we had our son. And, um, so, you know, so that was another big thing. But it was also a life changing thing. Um, whoo! <laughs> I'm not supposed to have tears. Let you guys have the tears. <laughs> um, I 
had my son and it was a life changing because I wanted more for him and I wanted to be more for him. And so I um, went down and it was the first time that I um, realized where I could read at um, because I've always been passed through in life and everything that, you know, I, um, why did I need to read? Why did I need anything? So I went down to the local literacy council and I was reading at a second grade level. And um, here I was now 19, probably almost 20 years old, and I could barely read. And I wanted to read books for him. I wanted to, you know, um, be a better mom for him. And so for two years, I went to the literacy council three days a week to learn to read, to learn to write, and to learn to do a lot of the basic stuff. And so once I did that, then I was able to go and get my GED to graduate, to have some kind of a diploma and everything. Well, I the 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 guy I married was very educated. And so he, you know, he he was the provider, which he liked it like that. And later you'll know why. <laughs> and uh for me, I thought, wow, this is wonderful. Now I know how to read and I know how to do all this stuff. And he went to school. Oh, he became an engineer and he was the breadwinner, but I wanted something for me. And it was always, well, we don't have the money. We don't have the time. We don't have this. We don't, you know, it was always a reason. So, um, you know, here I go through my marriage and, um, you know, we have, uh, another, uh, another daughter that, um, lot, lot many years between <laughs> and because my son had a whole lot of energy. So I always said he was like three or four kids in one and I could not handle a second. And so after he got to a certain age, then we decided, okay, we would have a, another uh, a daughter or another child. And we had Lydia, which Lydia was just a huge blessing and another life changing um, thing for, for our family. And um, then it took us kind of all around. We kind of moved around. Uh, because he could get a better job or whatever that kind of stuff so we ended all over and uh, <laughs> everywhere but now we ended up in Houston Texas and um, and in Houston uh, things just started becoming harder in our marriage partly because I had went to school at that point and became a, a massage therapist and I gained a little bit of education now, rewind back a little bit. Every time I would talk about any kind of education or anything, he would say, no, uh, we don't have time. You're not available. So I went and paid the money full, full for the massage therapy school because I knew if I paid it, then he had to let me because he wouldn't have wanted the money to go to waste. And it, it he did. He was very angry, but he, he said, okay, fine. So because I went to massage therapy school, it gave me something to do. And so when we moved to Houston, I, I decided to really officially open my massage therapy business. And, um, and fortunately I had clients refer to me and that kind of stuff, but the better I did, the more I did, the more I wanted the, the harder our marriage became. Um, and, you know, I didn't realize, but I was living in a marriage that was quite confined and quite controlled. And, um, and it always worked as long as I played my role. But when I started deciding who I was and realizing I wanted more in life, uh, that's when things became a little bit of a, a shift. But through that time, I do want to mention, because I, I do want to share some things that really helped me through these times. I, um, Dr. Laura used to be online. Uh, on t She's still on the radio, but you have to have like a special thing or something to listen to her now. Before we didn't have all that special stuff. You just listen, you just listen online, you know, or on the, the radio. So Dr. Laura Schlesinger, I think she's out of California. When Brad and Lydia were growing up, that's who I listened to because I did not have any kind of parental um, examples. I needed something. And I tell you, she's, she's a tough woman, but she really um, just gave me a bigger picture to look at. Did I take all of her advice? No, because I'm a lot 
of free spirit. So there you go. Right, but, but, but anybody, you've got to take what works for you and then leave what may work for another. I mean, that's that's pure discernment, which is important for everyone. Yes. Yes, exactly. And it, and that is the case. So that's what I just want to share. So if I know she's still on and she's marvelous. And if you really just listen to her, her, her um, basis of being a good human, mm -hmm. uh, it's really, it's a very good program. And um, so then I also learned to read back then. So I started reading and I did want to share a couple books that I really liked that just helped, um, you know, just positive things in for me and millionaire next door was one of them. And I thought after I started thinking about it, I thought I got to reread that book because it's, I think it's going to help me even more now where I am. So millionaire next door, Thomas Stanley, he would, that was a really good book and then um this is more um uh, this <laughs> other book is more like personal development book mm -hmm. and that was uh uh Tuesdays with Maury and uh Mitch album album I think and um Tuesdays with Maury and, yes Tuesday with Maury uh it's a good book and you know I think until you discover what this line means it can seem a little bit off but he, one of the lines in the book is once you learn how to die you'll learn how to live wow and for me yeah that was very impacting that's, for me that's very that's very profound that's very deep and truth because there's a lot of us that we cling on to that we think is important or truth but in, mm -hmm. it's really just a program but we still identify with it and those things need to die you're right yes Yes. And so that's kind of where I think when I read that book, it was really life changing for me um, because I really do try to let go of that and move here. Is there a transition? Yes, there's always a transition. You know, when when my uh, when my husband, you know, when I realized that our marriage was coming to an end, um, you know, I was still trying to fight for our marriage, but I realized, you know, when I was fighting for something that really wasn't worth having anymore and it wasn't worth having for either one of us or our whole family, you know, it was, um, it was just destructive to all of us in a sense, uh, because I couldn't be who he wanted me to be. I couldn't be in that box, which was causing, um, um, attention and that kind of stuff. And I remember, um, the, our pastor, she, she came to me and she said, Stacey, how did you go through that just in such a positive way? And so many times in my life, people have said, you've gone through major um, trials and major things and you've had your head up, you smiled and you've kept on. It's not that I don't um, process it. I don't have to go through things you know, we've gone through things together, Wendy. And so there is things I have to go through, but ultimately it's that line of, uh, once you learn to die, you learn to live. And the thing is, do we have a great world? We have, a, I mean, we're in a marvelous time in our life and, and, uh, it's finding those positives. It's, it's discover, discovering the positives and not continue living in the negative. And, and there's a difference between somebody that's negative and somebody that's living in negative mm -hmm. because there's days that I'm negative. I'm not, I, I want to be by myself. I like my bed, my bed's my best friend. And that's what I want. And I want to lay there and cry a little bit and just right, have my own little party. But that's not, I don't want to, I, I really want to work on changing that, that painting of that picture, but that's not being negative. That's no, self, that's self-preservation, that's self-caring, that's self-nurturing. That's my day that I need. But yeah. if I stay there in that place, then I, then I become, I'm becoming what I am, that negative. So I, I, I have my party and, um, and then I get up and I process it in whatever processing you need for me. Uh, my processing is a lot of times going through visualization. I do a lot of meditation and I meditate and I look at things and I, 
I see things deeper and, uh, and then I release. And sometimes I have, it takes a little bit longer. My meditation has to be more than just one day or one hour. It might be a little while, or maybe I need to call a friend and go through a process to release, um, you know, or that kind of thing. And, but I pretty much release that stuff because life is, I always say life is too good to be down. It's too good. I mean, it really is, you know, anytime I hear somebody talk about their life, I think, I always think, well, somebody has it worse, <laughs> you know, somebody has it worse. And so when we start realizing how good we got it, um, I think we can live from a positive place and a happy place in our life. And uh, because we really do, we really have it good. And I tell you, so I transitioned after the divorce. I had been a stay-at-home mom minus my massage business that I had been in now for about five or six years. And I had a nice clientele, but I wanted to travel. That's what I was born to do. That was, that was my, when I was a kid, I used to look at um, the uh, love boat and um, uh, the Hawaii show. I can't think of where he goes, the plane, the plane. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and We're doing I always, ourselves, guys. <laughs> yeah. I always say, Oh, I was only, I, I'm only 18. So it was this yesterday. Um, uh, but I would say, I want to do that as an adult. I want to travel. That's my job. And so when I got divorced, Fantasy Island, that's right, Fantasy Island. And uh, when I got, um, when I got divorced, I, I was devastated, even though I didn't, wasn't able to travel a huge amount to my marriage, because anytime I talked about vacation, it was just like, you know, an explosion. And I, I had pay consequences for that. And so then um, right after the divorce, I was sitting on my back porch and I was um, asking God to bring something into my life. And I said, you know, I've always thought I would be really good at multi-level marketing or some kind of sales. And I thought that would be fun. So I was kind of looking on my computer and nothing was coming. And I just said, oh, this is, you know, it's, it's going to happen if it happens kind of a thing. And I just kind of released it. Well, Maybe six months later, um, a friend of mine reached out and said, hey, I have um, a company, something that a product that I think you should look at because I was quite sick. Mm -hmm. And some of you've heard my testimony, but I was quite sick. And so she sent me this product. I thought, wow, it's amazing. At, after I finally tried it though. So let me, let me preface my free spirit wasn't willing to go for it. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I, when I finally tried it, I was like, wow, this is really amazing. And, um, and then in Sontag, which is really a very dear friend of mine, we've, we've been doing life and business together for a while. Um, and that's a whole nother adventure. And, uh, so she said, Stacy, we got to do this girl. We got to do this. And really, I think she's my cheerleader. And I, I don't know if I would be where I am if it wasn't for her cheering me on. And, um, so, so we started doing this and conference was coming around that year and she was begging me to go. And I'm thinking I'm a single mom. Do I have two pennies to rub together? I had two teenage girls at home. I was like, oh my goodness, how can I afford this? How can they be alone? You know, even though they're teenagers and I was 16 living on my own, they were 16. Oh Lord. And they couldn't have been alone. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, and the thing is, is when you live through it, you're way more protective of your older children, your your own children, right? When they're yeah, yeah. growing up, it's like, no, you're not going to have what I grew up with. No, no, they were incapable. So I told Anne, I just cannot go to conference. I can't do it. And she said, Stacey, pray about it. Really think about it. And um, I sat down and, and I, I pray, meditate, me and God pray and meditate. And so I was, and God showed me the picture of me in the backyard after my divorce. And he said, I brought you to this and you're going to throw it away. And right there, it was like, boom, I got on the phone. I called in. I said, I'm all in. And I hadn't looked back. Well, after I was signed up in June, November, we went to conference. January, I quit my massage business to do LifeWave full-time. Was I making enough 
in six months? No, but I knew what this company could offer and I was willing to throw it all in. Well, since then, I, I mean, well, even before then, I have gone to Europe several times. I have stayed in Milan for a couple of months. I have gone, I probably have taken, I don't know, 10 or 15 trips to Milan. I mean, uh, Europe and, um, and like Anne said, she says, uh, my daughter's decided to go to Spain to college. Her dad had decided he's not going to do any participation in this. And she said, I want it. And I said, guess what? I get to pay for you to go to college because he hasn't, there's no support or anything like that for years. Um, but I, I get to do that because of this. And, you know, yes, have I had difficult days, but you know what? I always, what we put our mind to, you actually posted something like this today, but it's so true. What we think about is what, what comes. And so we got to see the bigger picture. We got to see what do we want? What do we want in life? This has nothing to do with about this business. It's like, what do you want in life? Do you want, do you want to buy a house? Do you want to travel? Do you want to, whatever it is, don't go by. And I am very big on don't going by the standard of whatever somebody else says. If they, you know what I decided I've heard for years, oh, you got to buy a house. When you buy a house, you've achieved. And I thought, I don't want a stinking house. I have to do this and I have to do that and I have to do this. Now, maybe I want investment properties later down the road, but do I want a house? No, I love, I love my place. I, everything is done for me. I have a pool I can go down and swim in. I have a little gym I can go work out in. I have, but something breaks hello, it's broke, come fix it. I love that. To me, that I made it. I have a place that I have to do, you know, so I'm not saying go buy a house or don't buy a house. I'm saying don't follow the rules. Follow what is right for you. Whatever that is, get out there and just follow and decide, is this right for me? And then, and then see it, see it, visualize it, and it will be there. You know, when Lydia said she wanted to go to school in Spain and this is how much money it's going to cost and her rent is going to be this much a month. I mean, heck, her rent is almost as much as my rent here. And and then I had to pay tuition and all this stuff. I, I thought, OK, I can have a nervous breakdown right now or I can go. Let's visualize it and let's see it happening. Mm. And that's what I did. And you know what? Things have produced. And I'm not even sweating a bullet. She's like, oh, we got to pay for this. Okay, there. Okay, this. Okay, that. Okay. You know, and, you know, because I'm seeing it and I know I'm calling it forth, I'm visualizing it and I'm I'm participating in right. my, my energy. Yeah. So I really want to go and point out to everybody, you know, what Stacy just said. This is so important for every one of us. You have the choice as to what you think about, what you focus on, and how what you react to and how you react to something. So I remember, and I'm sure Stacy knows that I my story, you know, yours is that um oh, I didn't write down her name. What was the gal that you listened to on the radio? Dr. Laura Schlesinger. Dr. Laura. You want to know C H L -E -S if you type in Dr. Laura, you'll find her because she's, uh, so yeah, she's Abraham hardcore. Hicks was my Dr. Laura Schlesinger, right? And I remember when she was teaching about money and, and this sort of stuff. And she said, I guess her husband was completely wealthy. And when something broke, because she was raised in the mindset, you know, similar to all of us, she would go, oh, the phone broke. How am I going to deal with this? Right. It was nothing but all of the layers of what it takes to fix the phone, money, time, effort, everything. And his response was, oh, goody, something to shop for. And he just had that positive outlook. And eventually it rubbed off her because then it became no big deal. And money showed up and time showed up and the energy showed up to basically do these things. You know, the way you choose to place your emotions is such a big deal because that will fuel where your focus is going to go. 
And your focus, the more you have, it creates the momentum, like what Stacey just said, but then create the more momentum you create because the you know, divine, I'm sorry, just in case you didn't know this, you have a creator, you know, some people call it God, that energy is in every cell of your body. And it's just waiting for you to focus in one place long enough to go, oh, we're going to funnel a lot of energy there and you create it in this world. So Stacey, thank you very much for bringing up that opinion point. That's really important for everyone to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I, I mean, I had, don't think I have anything else um, other to share other than uh, I know you want to do some questioning time um, other than I just, I mean, my biggest thing I can leave is just to say, you know, um, let, let go of what we can't control and just, st you know, to today's, I, I tell my teenage girls and, and Brad, uh, when he when he calls, <laughs> he's a boy. They don't call. Um, <laughs> I tell him to um, today doesn't define your tomorrow. Your past doesn't define who you are. Did I do things that yesterday that were hard or wrong or bad or did I make a mistake? Did I? You know what? But yet today I get to put my feet up. And I get to stand up, put my pants on, and I get to live a different day. And so I, I just 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 live today um, and not let yesterday define you. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Yes, because a lot of times we beat ourselves up consistently with the things we did yesterday. But if we did make some poor choices or react in a poor expression, Give yourself some slack, guys, because that is simply because you're reactive to something that's being triggered from something in your past and you didn't know how to deal with it then. And that's this moment is reminding you of that then and you don't know how to deal with it now. And so you just go. Bah. And then when you finally get away from it and you're like, oh, that poor person, they didn't deserve it because it had nothing to do with them and it had all to do with you. Right. So get like, yeah, Stacy, you just. Yep, you got to go. I'm not going to beat myself up. I'm just this. I know I now know better, and I'm going to try to work on that that association. So I'm not really yeah. ah. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's one of the hardest things for people. It really um, messes with people when you say, "What bothers you is is your thing. Mm -hmm. What bothers me, if I if I'm hurt, offended." angry, whatever. It's actually a me thing and not a you thing. Yeah. It's, it's uh, like someone coming to you and saying, Stacy, I've got a problem with how you uh, spoke the other day. And the rea reaction would be, well, you know, usually it's a defense, but really, honestly, you're, you're offended and hurt by what I said the other day. And it was a, a you thing and not a me thing. But that's a hard pill to swallow. Now, if somebody came to me, I would say, oh, my goodness, I'm so sorry. But I would know that it wasn't something I did to create it. It really was something that you need to work through. Was I ugly? Was I nasty? Was I? Yes, all the, those same things can still be true in that same same parallel. But really, if I'm hurt, offended, and angry, it's it's something that is going on inside of me that I need to look at and go, wow, yeah. what triggered me to be upset with this person? What triggered, and that's a really hard pill to swallow. And I'm, I, I have my faults. My friend Judy's online. She's got plenty of calls of me saying, do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. There's, that out too. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of people guys, I'm sure that would just come out of you from nowhere and see, I've got a problem with you, blah, blah, blah. Remember it is their problem. It is yeah. not necessarily for you to solve and take responsibility for. That is their problem. And if they're really will willing to work with it, chances are they won't really come to you in such a defensive manner. They'll come to you in a manner of, you know, I I, I, I need to work this out. You know, when you said that and that and that in that tone, I just, I, I, I don't know. I just got really upset with you. That's a person who's ready to work through their stuff. And, you know, they yeah. Well, and you went through a process recently with me because of that same sort of thing. Yeah. I came to you and I, I said, I need to vent something, not with you, but just in something in general. Yeah. And you said, 
what triggered you to be upset by this? You didn't say, uh, oh, well, you should go back and tell them <laughs> or, or you should. You said, and you know what? We went through a process and it I've released it. And now I live in peace with it and I live in love with it and I'm and I live a happier day with it. And I I changed it just everything inside me changed. So it's good to have those people around us that remind us of those things. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask a question that that might kind of seem like a, a low blow. So forgive me. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, coming from, I mean, you and I have a very, very, very similar childhood, alcoholism, mental, emotional, and sometimes physical abuse. And so I know that I didn't clean that up or I, I stuck to it. Let's put that. I stuck to that, that energy, that um, environment. So of course I married somebody who was pretty much exactly the same. And that's very common psychology. But as we move forward in life, I know that at times for me, actually, I can't say that in the last 10 years, but prior hand, I would still attract and get triggered, right? By these very strong individuals that still want to elicit um, their control, their will, their power over the other. Right. And since we already have that, um, we've already been conditioned to be, you know, submissive in a roundabout way. Um, when you I'm sure you did cross that in your path, perhaps in your, you know, you're more in your youth than now. But what what would you what kind of if someone's in this situation now is where I'm really trying to get at. What would you give them some advice to as how to stop attracting that number one number two how to respond or react to that and how should they take care of themselves uh wow that's really that is a powerful you, you'll have to ask me uh some of it more because i'm gonna start but i i may forget everything you just said um so for me um i i, I really had to learn good meditation um and uh, meditating and, and doing some work for within me. And, um, and sometimes, uh, one of the things that I, I went through and did, uh, just on my own, I can do, you know, I didn't have to have, I mean, a friend of mine showed me and then I just started doing it on my own, but I had to honestly go back, forgive the bad things that I've seen, you know, the, the, uh, like, you know, like a specific picture when I was a childhood of my mom doing something to me, I had to go back and visualize that. And then for me, I seen where's, where's uh, God in the room for me okay. and where is God in the room for my mother? And so I never could bring my mother on the other side of the wall with me. There was always a wall but I could start seeing God holding her hand and holding my hand. And then we took all the stuff that was created from that. We threw it up and released it. And it's a little bit more of a process than this, but this is basically, we threw it up and released it. And in turn, we, we allowed basically the good things to come in. So now when I look at some of those memories, my brother and sister talk about it. And I'm thinking, I have no clue what they're talking about because I don't see that memory anymore. Yeah. I see I, I've replaced it with a positive memory. And so that that was one piece of the transitioning of of um, find uh, of moving into having more people come into my life that are not that way. And then I had to work on myself, too. At the same time, I was releasing and pouring back in. I had to work on my own self to go, OK, um, who am I? And what do I want life? And I think uh, the patches help with strength and clarity. And then I also decided I'm not going to open any doors to anything in my life until I know where I know I am. And so, because a lot of times, and I'm just going to be honest for us women, we get divorced, we jump back into another relationship, we jump back into an, well, and then we go, I don't know why I keep picking up the same guy because we didn't learn to go, who am I? How, who am I without someone? Who, how do I love myself? 
because the more we love ourselves and the more we understand who we are and we we uh, we understand what we desire and want we're putting out that different energy and we're not going to attract that other jump because now we've cleaned out stuff and now we're putting out a different energy yeah yeah beautiful and guys that process um is not like okay i'm going to take a weekend <laughs> or I'm going to take a month. Um, no, it takes years, you know, it takes for, for my scenario, which is again, very, very re reflective to, to Stacey's here, but I, I only want to speak for myself. You know, I had eight, 16 years, same thing. Actually, I was out the door at 16 too. So at 16 years, you know, I had that programming of that vibration energy and that people around me. So, and I continued to reflect that all the way up until I was 40 years of age. Then finally at 40, I said, enough, I'm done. I'm not going to do this anymore. I did exactly what Stacy said. And honestly, it's taken me close to 20. Well, yeah, it's no, as they say, take me 15 years to clear all that vibration that we have stored in our cellular body that which constantly broadcast. So it's constantly bringing in like vibration experiences and finally clean that up where I don't usually ever run into a rude person even so. So it's quite interesting. So thank you for sharing that because I know it's really helpful and opinion for everybody to understand how to do that. Yeah. Um, so um, let's see here the time. So um, what else can we talk about? Um, so I know you've worked with people and I have know that you know, you know, it's really hilarious people, you, for some of you people who, do, who are not, you know, practitioners, it's hilarious. You always, when you get somebody coming in the door and they're like, oh, I've got to talk about over-controlling people. Okay. You know, and, and even you're massaging them and you're hearing their story. And then another person comes in. Oh my God, my mother, all she wants to do is control me. Okay. And you're massaging. And literally you get three people or more coming in with the same subject matter. And you're like, okay, I get it. I've got to work on my processing of dealing with controlling people. So, you know, does any story that, that you can think of that has posed maybe controlling is the one, because I know you and I are so psychically linked that you can think that would help people um, how to, again, work through that or how to work past it. And I know it's pretty similar exactly to what you just got through speaking about, but anything you can shed any light, that, any story that comes to mind? Well, I, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm trying to, uh, <laughs> um, I would definitely ground. I would de definitely, in grounding, if you don't know anything about grounding, research grounding, go out, walk, be present with the ground, take your shoes off, um, you know, just sit down by a tree. Um, you know, when they say tree huggers, those people took it to a wrong, wrong place. I, we are tree huggers. Go hug that tree, get grounded with it. It, 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 it they took the wrong definition. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, we need to bond and, um, you know, and just in kind of release stuff because it, there is such an energy into grounding that, you know, stuff goes out of you and that kind of stuff. The other thing is without getting woo wooey, um, cause I don't want to freak anybody out, but crystals, they do have an energy and, and I do have some crystals. I have a really huge crystal behind me. And, uh, as a massage therapist, I can tell you when I had that in my room and when I didn't have my room, um, you know, stuff just you know, and, and I had, you know, as a therapist, you have to go out and release stuff. You ha have to let it go because it's someone else's stuff. And my friend, Judy, she, she hands out books like left and right on. Um, I don't have to make it all better. That is a really good book and we don't have to make it all better. So that is a way to go when we're, when we have somebody as a client or somebody on our team or something like this, and then did, 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 did. you know what? I can show empathy without carrying it. It's not mine. I'm not going to change their circumstances by picking it up and carrying it. So why would I, um, you know, and I had to learn that lesson because I would have pain because they had pain and I would have, and then I would, what the heck? You know, and I realized it wasn't my stuff 
and I had to release it and I didn't have to make it better. I could show them love and compassion. I could listen. Um, if they allowed me, I could feed into their life. Uh, if they didn't, then that's okay too. I don't, they don't have to hear me. Um, it's, it's fine. I can still love them. And, but then I release it because mm -hmm. it's not mine. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, back to kind of what I did about the stuff going up in the air is really, I always would see my office and my, my place as a ceiling with a, and the angels were up there with a big old trash bag. And as soon as that stuff was coming out of those people, I was loving them, but the trash was going up and the angels were taking it away. And so I'm a very visual person, as you can see. And so I need to see visions of the visual of things. And so it's wonderful. I go, oh, wow, thank you, angel. <laughs> so, you know, if that's, that's just a couple of things for me that uh, I've used to help release that stuff of somebody yeah. else's. Yeah. So guys, I'm going to recap. So going back to trees and tree hugger. So guys, there's a lot of information and I mean so much. You have no idea that has been hidden, shoved down and actually turned around to be false and a negative. And, you know, getting like, I'm sure a lot of us have heard about earthing by now and tree hugging honestly is the same thing. When you hug a tree, literally your lower vibrations get pulled from your body into the tree and immediately gets get grounded into earth. And then it creates a circle a cycle where the uh, higher vibrations get pushed into your body. And it's the you know, same symbiotic relationship we share with trees. We exhale the carbon dioxide, they inhale it, they exhale the oxygen, we inhale it. We have such a huge symbiotic relationship with nature. And really, you know, there's lots of books, there's lots of people talk about this. And the powers that be do not want you to know about these things. That's why it's been hidden from us for centuries, because it makes us healthier. It makes us more calm. We're not so much to go into fear and into anger and frustration and all that sort of stuff. The second thing, crystals. I mean, we all kind of, I think everybody here believes that crystals are a living, thriving, vibrational um, rock as such, or a gem, because we have them in our patches. Um, but we've been using them in radio uh, for since the beginning of radio has ever been created because they can be programmed with a specific vibration. They hold that vibration, whether that is an electronic program or a individual intentional program. You can actually just hold those crystals and say, I want my 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 environment cleared of low vibrational energy consistently. And that could be it. And lastly, when you're talking about people coming forth with issues, right? And it's not our responsibility, guys. And this is, and I, and, and this is going to sound hard. And I want you to talk about this as well, because we're both single parents. It is so hard as parents that when our kids walk in with a very hard, heavy experience, the first thing we want to do is pull that energy from them and go, I'll save you. And I'll just sit here and I'll, I'll process the energy for you but we're really enabling them, right? But I'm gonna let you continue talking about that one in a second. But with general people who are like, here's my problem, 99.9% .9 of the people just want you to hold space. They just want you to listen, right? They don't want you to take it on and try to fix them or tell them what's wrong or what's right. They just want you to listen so they can continue to work it out. So Stacy, coming from a single parent, you know, I, I mean, we both have been through it. So, you know, what's your thoughts there? Well, that is one of the hardest, especially with daughters. Oh, they carry a lot of emotions. Hey, I have three. I had three. <laughs> well, you, you just don't realize it. And, you know, I there was no way I was that. No, I was perfect angel. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I've learned that I have to just love her and release her because she, she is working out her process right now. And I just need to hear her. And we, we came up with a thing because, you know, different kids like different ways. Some want you to give lots of opinions and some want you to give nothing. Some want you to do a little dance for them or whatever. I don't know. It just depends on the day. So I've just said, you know what? It's better us to be honest in the home and just say, 
I need to express something and I need you just to listen. And so that's what she does. And she'll say, I just need you to listen. And, and she doesn't get offended when, cause I started trying to help and I don't get offended because she tells me she just wants me to listen. And then I just listen. And I think this is so weird just to listen, but <laughs> I know sometimes, like, sometimes I'm listening. I mean, I don't know about you, but it's like, you know, the day can go on, but man, when you're ready to go to bed, oh, let me tell you about everything today. And it's like, I wanted to go to sleep and now you're going to spend the next 45 minutes. And a lot of it to me, it's just fluff. For them, it's really important and they want to bring you into their life. So you yes. smile and you listen and you ask questions. And you're thinking, I'm so tired. You could have done every night of the week and I would have been not tired, but tonight I'm tired. Exactly. exactly. It's hilarious. Or yes, all those they, times where, where they start telling you a problem and you start, okay, so let okay. So you need to look at Jane. Now you know Jane came from this sort of background and you know, and then go into that <laughs> that complete and they're like rolling their eyes like oh, I just need you to listen. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> then you do you have to rewind and just listen exactly. so and we and that's the biggest thing is learning you know um it was easier before she went to paraguay i discovered who i was the year she was gone as an empty nester and she discovered who she was living on her own in paraguay well with a host family and um so she she discovered who she was so then coming back now we're in a two different roles than we used to be. And it was learning to discover who we are now and respecting each other in the place that we are. And it it's taken some adjustment. I mean, a few about a month ago, I told her next summer when she comes home, I'm going to go on vacation for the summer. <laughs> you know, the point you just brought up, Stacey, kind of like wraps everything around, which is you had a point of your childhood which we don't need to, re you know, everybody knows what that Laurie looks at. And you had to reflect and realize it's time to change my, go to the next chapter. I'm no longer in that chapter. It's time to change, it's realize who I'm going to become now. And then you went on your own, you had a job, took care of yourself. And then you're like, okay, it's time now to make a new chapter and become a new person. And I'll become a wife and a mother and become, a, you know, more literate now. And, the, and what I want to point here is you're constantly that the, I see the theme here of you didn't hang on to your first chapter and still say, that's who I am or your second chapter. That's who I am. Or the third chapter of my husband tell me who I am. And oh well, my gosh, I got to stick to that because they told, that's what you told me who I am, but you kept reevaluating. You kept looking at yourself and seeing what really sticks to who I am and what really doesn't I need to get rid of. I, that's a, I think of all, that's, that's your story. That's beautiful. Yes. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's awesome. Okay. So everybody, we're going to open up some questions. Um, if you know how to raise your hand then do, if not, just unmute yourself. Um, somebody, while I'm waiting for people to do that, wanted to go in and re rehash about trees. Um, Stacey, you want to rehash it? Maybe coming from you, it might sound a bit more clarity, more clarity, have more clarity. Well, I just, I, for me, grounding is transition of, um, uh, not transition. That's not the right word I wanted. Um, it's exchanging of energy. I am going, I need to release the, the low energy that I'm in the negative place, the whatever, whatever word you want to put with it. I need to release that. Whew, that flushes out of me. And in turn, I receive, and I receive now a good energy and a higher energy, a frequency, a, a, a higher place. And, and so I, it's an exchange, um, basically what meditation with God is, and it's an exchange. I go and I lay everything as, as some people say, I lay everything at the altar. Well, if you lay everything at the altar, what are you picking up? What are you getting back? If you lay everything at the altar and you don't, and you're just walking away, that's not really what happens. You, you lay everything down to receive back a higher energy, a higher, uh, frequency, a higher, you know, and, and, and by laying it down, you're saying I'm giving it to God 
so I can live in a happier place. I can live in a place of freedom. Well, that's basically too what you're doing when you go out and ground. It's more of a um, a physical thing versus a visual thing with God. And so you go out, you stand outside, you hug a tree, you you know sit down and write, and, and with the tree on the back or whatever, you're releasing something and and you're gaining something. Because remember, this is not. Um, um, taking out of the relationship with who God is, God created the heavens and the earth. If that's what you, you know, everybody's got their own belief, but he created that. He created something for us tangible here to raise our frequency and raise our energy, just like crystals will raise our energy and frequency. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I, I hope that was a different yeah. or. Yeah, because guys, you got to remember God put us where? Did he put us on Mars? No, he put us here on planet Earth because we interact with it so well. The only reason why we even believe that we don't, we need to live in concrete cities is due to that of man. Um, Tasha, uh, why don't you, uh, oh, wait, hold it. Do we have somebody else? Yeah, Tasha, why don't you unmute yourself and um, vo voice your, your question because um, I'm not quite understand what you're saying in the chat. Let's see if I can see this. Yeah, so... Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, I found that really interesting how you were doing the vis visualization with your mom, with God, holding hands, and then you were separate, and you had this wall, but I'm not, I'm not sure on um, how you do the release where you're, and then you're pouring back in, so how you changed it. It's so good, you know, so very helpful. Yeah, so it is a much longer step. So just to kind of give a, a fast or short. Uh, so when I first, before I went to a release place, first I seen me at whatever age that I was processing. For me at that time, I was a little kid. I don't know how old I was, maybe eight or nine. I don't know. Um, it was just whatever that memory is. I seen myself in wherever, wherever I could see myself, because your vision is going to be different than my vision. I seen myself in a room. And then where was my mother? Well, my mother was in another room over there. I seen her. At, and it was basically seeing her at that exact time of when I was that age and she was. And so I seen her. Well, there was a wall there. There was not even a door. There was just a wall. Okay. Where was God? Where, where did I first see God? And he, And I seen him beside me. Hey, my mother was over there. I was over here. So I got to say what I needed to say to my mother with God's protection beside me. So I told my mother everything that I felt like I needed to say at that point as that nine-year-old girl. And it was not pretty and it was not ugly. You know what? God, God made us. He, he can handle the bad words. Let me just tell you. He made me. So I know he can handle the cuss words. And <laughs> so whatever I needed to say, I was allowed to say, because God doesn't care what those words are. He, it has no meaning to him. And except that he cares about me. So I said everything I needed to say to that woman on the other side of that wall. And then God said, are you done? Is that where you need to be? And I said, yes. When I finally was finished. It could be a five minute process. It could be a one minute. It could be an hour process. It's your process, whatever you need to say and do. And then the, he said, okay, we're going to give it to the angels. And the angels took it up in their trash bag that they had been catching it all in and they took it away. Now I said, where's God now? And God was, I wouldn't take that wall down. I wasn't ready to take that wall down at this time. So God was on the standing in the middle with one hand going that to my mother and one hand going that to, to me. And because of that energy change, now I seen, wow, I released my mother and I forgave her. Have I completely released and com cleaned everything out? Maybe not because that wall's still there at that time. But he still was holding both of our hands and, and I could feel that peace. And, and it was just for that particular circumstance, that particular memory, that kind of a thing. Um, you know, I hadn't spoken to my mother in uh, seven or eight years, um, maybe more than that. 
And then my dad, then I found these patches. Then I reached out because I knew my dad had Alzheimer's. And that was the first time or seven, eight years that I had any contact. You know, my brother and me, we we talked to my parents whenever he talks to her, whatever. I talk to her whenever. But we have totally two different relationships. I've released a lot of that stuff from childhood and he hasn't. So when he talks to her, he calls me, oh my goodness, she's this. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, really? Because that wasn't my conversation with her. I'm like, she's telling me how she's going to do this. And they're going to do that. Oh my goodness, they're so exciting. And, and it's such a different positive and change. So it, this is, you know, it's just, he's still working through it. And I'm in a different place. So maybe she's saying the same thing. I don't have a clue and I don't care because it, for me, it's all positive and wonderful. <laughs> and I think, you know, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect me, whatever's going on in her life and her circumstances. So, um, you know, I, I added something else in there, but that was the process. And, and you can do it over and over and over as new things come up. And, uh, and that's still a short version, but I think that's a little bit more detail. Um, so what I, what I'd like to add on to that is Wayne Dyer's, his, um, his saying, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And you can think of your own body having all the experiences, things that you haven't processed, including maybe low vibrations. And you think about yourself as a balloon and you have a string with all those weights, all those experiences, all those lower vibrations. And as you move through these things, like Stacy has moved through consistently, she's removed a lot of those weights. So what happens to her balloon? It moves up into a higher vibration. So if she's up here and her mom's talking down here. Guess what? She's not going to pick up those lower vibrations that mom is spewing out. She's only going to pick up those higher vibrations that her soul from her mother is actually saying. That's why she doesn't hear the same thing that her father hears. I think it's beautiful. But the same from Wayne Dyer, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And that is like gold. It is factual. It totally works. And Stacey, you're evident to it. All right. Anyone else would like to unmute? I saw someone else earlier unmuting themselves, but I, I closed them up because Stacey was still talking. Would anybody else like to unmute themselves and say something or ask a question on this topic or whatever Stacey's talking about? I guess not. I'm going to sound inarticulate here because I'm working through something. I have attracted a LifeWave customer who buys a couple of patches, and he's a preferred customer, so I make $40 every time his order goes through. And he's very abusive. And I want to, I want to vindicate myself in his eyes. I want to make him like me. And I'm just not sure how to deal with him. After I first saw how abusive he was, I wanted to transfer him to one of my downlines, but I couldn't find anyone I would curse with him. So I don't know if I should just let him go, or I really, I don't even know what the question is because I don't know fully what I'm working through here or how I got this guy. He used to be a lawyer, so he's very adversarial. And I don't know how to handle him, if I should just let him go, ignore him. But I keep hoping that the patches will make him a nicer person so I can deal with him. <laughs> so I have a couple, um, and I hope I'm not too um, direct when I say this, because I say it with love. Um, what is going on with you that, you would feel like you need to be accepted by him. So that would be the first thing I would think about because there's some reason that you want his approval because he's not, he, he doesn't need, you don't need his approval ultimately, but there's something that's creating something in you that's saying what, so what does he represent to you? Does he represent a family member? Does he represent childhood? Does he rep, what does that you're needing his approval? And then the other thing on the life wave side of things is we do have customer service. And oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I'm just so busy because you know what? We teach people how to treat us. And right. I have some people that don't, don't talk very nice. You know what? They go to voicemail. They send me a text. 
you know what you I'm gonna you know what you treat me with respect you know my sister she calls she cusses me she's nasty well then my dad was in the hospital recently had a little uh, surgery and she couldn't get a hold of anybody she calls me and she wants a, a follow-up information I said I would love to follow up and give you information but in return when I call you or you call me to find that out, you have to show me respect. And if you start talking like you have been, I'm going to hang up and I'm not going to, you know, even if I don't say that, I'm saying that to me, you're not going to treat me this, uh, that phone hit in, in. So I would say we have customer service, utilize it. Oh my gosh. Thank, you know, I'm just so busy. I wish I could, I wish I could take the time to do it, but they can answer the question. But you still don't got to solve here and figure out what it is about that person that that you'd so desperately desire the approval. And it's not a bad thing about you. It's just discovering who you are. Oh, That's what it. he said was that I'm not a good example of how the patches work for mental clarity. And oh, well, it's, it's that, because you don't have to accept that. You, you don't. You know what? And that's where you got to release. You got to release that. You got to release forgiveness for that. Because that doesn't define you. One person's opinion about you doesn't define you. I would say tapping on that. But I don't know if uh, tapping. Some people know what that is. And some people don't. But go in and figure out how to release that. Because, you know, you could use the same scenario I just said. Where you see God. And where is God in the room for you and him. And then release it. Um, or if you do know tapping, I would do some tapping on that. Yeah. Laura, what Lisa, I also go I'm ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Laura, what I also would recommend is, you know, a lot of times my daughter, she got in or my elder daughters, because my of course my husband is abusive. And so they kind of got pulled into the similar thing. And they always think they have to be there for the other person. And that is like the empath dealing with the narcissist. And the narcissist consistently laying on top. And we think it's our job to take their crap. It's our job to take that abuse. And in truth, so basically try to back up, make some space. And this might sound kind of um, spiteful, but it's not. It's really self-preservation. If the person's not showing you respect, they don't give a crap about you. So why should you give a crap about them? If they're not showing you respect, then who gives a crap? Because I know a lot of times when I first practiced this about 20, 30 years ago, trying to stand my boundaries, sometimes when we speak our boundaries, we think, oh my God, that was really rude. That was so harsh. But you got to remember, they're already coming from a harsh place attacking you. So try to release that harsh and say, no, I'm just standing my boundaries. Now, if speaking your boundaries is hard, text your boundaries. I am really sorry. Uh, Bob or Bill or whatever his name is, I can no longer work with you. You know, I've got such a full schedule. Here's LifeWave's number. Feel free to call them anytime. God bless and blessings to you and block their number. Just block it. You don't need to bring your energy down. You're trying to bring your energy up to consistently attract. You don't need to bring it down because of this one person. That's what I always tell my daughters is if somebody's on top of you or somebody's like doing like a nit, 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 nit in your ear and bringing your energy down, that's the dark forces trying to deep, trying to dim your light. Don't let it do it. Just block it. All right. Liz Wheeler. Is, is that good, Laura? Did we move on to Liz? Oh, yeah, that's fine. That was Lisa. Thank you. Lisa, you want to mute yourself? Yeah, I was just hoping that you could reiterate when you were speaking about the tree hugging and its effect on our vibrational range. Are you talking about for me or for Stacy? For Stacy, I believe it was Stacy talking about earthing and tree hugging when you actually hug a tree. Do I have? Yeah, I mean, you can you can actually hug a tree, or, or you can just go outside and take your shoes off and put your feet and walk around. Basically, you're just releasing, you're releasing whatever junk is, I mean, even if you have a good day, it's still good to do it. I mean, um, just, just whenever, every day, I mean, so you're releasing the whatever's keep, so, so say you have an energy level from zero to a hundred. Well, and you, you start out the day, sometimes you start out the day at zero, sometimes you start out the day 100. But let's assume that you started out the day at 100. But then this guy, Bob, calls Laura, and he's, 
Well, then her hundred goes down to 50. Well, then this goes on, something else happens. And now she's at a 40 frequency level. I'm just, I'm trying to make it uh, a little bit simpler. And so then we go outside, we take our shoes off. We take that 60% or 60 number 60 that we lost went away because all the junk that was coming in our path and that and we we put our take our shoes off we walk around we hug the tree we just release that 60 to the trees to the ground to the to the everything around us and we're now now because we've taken that 60 and that of negative and gave it back to the to the ground to the to the tree to the whatever you're sitting you're hugging whatever now you, it's that 60 is going to come back but it's going to be at a higher frequency a, a clearer frequency it's not going to be filled with all a bunch of junk so now you go back up to 100 but it's 100 pure because you were 100 even when that junk was there it was just 60 of it was as junk and 40 of it was positive so, so you re get rid of the 60 junk, get 60 positive from the earth, from that tree, from the, ev your environment, from that kind of stuff. And now you're back at a hundred. So we're rebalancing clean. the energy, raising our energy back up with the nature's. Okay. Basically. Yes. Yep. Would that be a great way to say it, Wendy? Yeah. I mean, the really good thing for anybody who's like, this is kind of new to you, you know, go to a park sit in your car and, you know, shut the engine off. And just for a minute, just take um, evaluation of your body and how you feel, where your emotions are. If you're charged about something you're pissed off about, you know, rate that from one to 10. And then sit there for 10 minutes. Just um, don't look outside. Just kind of maybe look at your phone for about, you know, two to three minutes. And then take another gauge. How do you feel? Now, just sitting there looking at your phone. Chances are that has not changed any. Then I want you to get out of the car. Even if you just looked out in the nature, even if you just imagined nature, even if you put nature on the TV, your brain remembers what nature does for us. So it'll immediately start el eliciting all those um, electron neutrons and whatnot and, and balance out different things in your brain. But you can go literally just sit on the ground and put your back against the tree because it's kind of weird, you know, you're hugging a tree, people think, okay. So you just put put your back <laughs> against the tree. That's fine. And then put, you know, you want to wait for two to three minutes and then go ahead and take a re-evaluation of your numbers and how you feel. Guarantee you, you're not going to be as angry. You're going to be pretty relaxed. You're going to be more calmed down because again, the, ch the ch exchange of energy, it's something that we don't have to consciously be aware of. It just happens that because trees just like, we don't consciously think that when we exhale carbon dioxide, they inhale that and the trees exhale oxygen and then we inhale oxygen. We don't consciously think of that symbiotic change. Same thing of energy. My symbiote may just constantly just take the lower vibration and they push out higher vibration into our body. It's just a beautiful, wonderful symbiotic exchange. Doug is, Doug is um, telepathically sending um, high energy out to all of us with that tree in the background. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, there was a few others that had their hands up. Um, did you want to unmute yourself and say, or did, did they have to leave? I'm not really sure. So we have maybe a, um, uh, enough time for maybe for one more question or comment. I think Judy, was it you that had your hand raised? Go ahead and unmute yourself, love. Yes, oh, there she is. So, um, Laura, um, I have brain issues and that was, I, I'm waiting and excited that someday that's going to be helped with the patches and what I think is working on my liver right now. So, <laughs> and I would say, I, I, seriously, this, this is my personality. I would say, I know, I, I know I'm, I'm still hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful. So, um, and Stacy, I just have to say that this story that she told, she wouldn't have been able to tell 10 years ago that I was almost, it was hard for me not to cry because I've seen her change so much and that she is able to share that with everybody. And so 
she is a good example and, and she works really hard. Well done, Stacy. May I? May I say one Thank thing? You. Yes, Carl. Okay, so oh, no, as far as cognitive issues, you do have hope. My husband had two cancers at one time, had such severe brain fog, you can't even imagine. I won't even go into the details, it was horrible. So he's been patching for a couple of years now. Within 14 days, his mental acuity started popping back, which is what got me into the patches. Well, he has had two brain mappings done. I don't know if anyone's familiar. The first one showed a lot of uh, cognitive decline, the neurons weren't connecting, and he did some exercises on his computer and stuff. but. Having said that, I really think that the carnosine, the 39, the four, I mean, everything that he has done has really helped with his brain. His last brain uh, mapping that was just done, I get goosebumps thinking about it. Everything's firing, all the neurons. So there is hope. Keep patching and don't consider yourself, you know, like, and, and don't keep speaking. I can't think, I can't do this because you can and you will. Just a word of hope for that issue because it, it is hard, but there is hope with these patches. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Adele. <laughs> and Judy, Judy has been my best friend for I don't know how many years, um, 20 something plus years or so. And uh, so she has seen my journey. Um, and so I, it is very <laughs> uh, nice to hear your friends say that they have noticed because you think you've changed, you've seen yourself develop differently, but it is nice to hear um, from your friends that they can say uh, who you are today is not who you was yesterday. So thank you. Um, I do believe, oh, there was an iPhone. Uh, okay, let me unmute you, love. You got, um, unmute yourself again. You don't have your name, so please let us know your name. Hi, I'm Norma. I just wanted to let the lady know with the uh, brain, brain issue. I had a traumatic brain injury in 2019. And I had really bad, bad imbalance problems, uh, bad weather, bad sinuses, everything would just put me down in bed. I started using the eons in, my, in March. I have no more imbalance issues. So there is hope. So Thank hold you. on. You're welcome. Thank you so much for sharing that. All right, is anyone else uh, wanting to, sh uh, I, I saw somebody else had their hand up, but now. Can I ask a question? Sure, go for it. Um, so when you're talking about the trees and the nature and like the ocean stuff with, excuse me, with the EMFs. So I have health stuff too. And when I go near the trees, if I go up where the redwoods are or by the ocean, I feel like 100% better, like. So would that be energy or is that the frequency coming up or is it, I wonder if I'm affected by the EMFs, which would that be a negative energy? You want to take it? You want to take it, Stace? Um, well, <laughs> well, I mean, I think she talked to me. I mean, at least what I'm hearing she asked is she talked about two different things. Um, so there's a positive energy and then there's a negative energy. And um, so I think you were talking of two different types of energies. And, um, you know, the thing is, uh, I get electric, uh, I feel electricity. I can hear, I don't discuss this a lot because a lot of times people are like, what the heck? So most people don't know this about me, but I hear, I can hear electricity. I can feel electricity. Um that is more of the negative kind. <laughs> um, now, the positive kind is um, more of when you you when you gain something. When so uh, to feel actually feeling is when you release and you you feel like like Wendy was telling when you're sitting in the car and you're negative. Da, 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 da. If it was the negative type of energy, the EF uh, EMFs, what. Um, whatever you, yeah, if More it's the negative kind of, yes, then you're not going to go, wow, I feel great now because it's, it's going to keep you at that lower frequency. Um, it, it so the po positive, the good energy is going to go, wow, I, you know, so going to, uh, the, the park 
you know, if it has a lot of poles and light and, and uh, electricity around and a 5G tower and all that kind of stuff, you probably aren't going to pick up the greatest uh, positive because it's too much electricity type. Uh, that's that's one type of energy. We're talking more of the uh, natural energy that's being put out, the more positive. I hope I answered that, um, or at least from my understanding of what she was asking. Yeah. If I could add to that, so when you are in, so it, it, just like Stacy said, there's not to make it so convoluted, but it is still convoluted. We're, we're, we're a very complicated being, guys, and there's many different layers of energy. So when you're around the ocean, we have what's called ions. And whenever you have a specific, let's say you're really angry, right? And that is a very strong vibration in your field it has a positive charge. When you go to the ocean, because salt has a negative charge to it, that's why it cancels it out. And that's why you always feel better when you're near the ocean. Same thing if you literally walk into a stream and you stand in the stream, same thing. Those negative ions will just kind of wash through you and, and literally neutralize all the positive charges that are in your field. And we're talking literally electrons, guys. This is just the basic science electrons. Same thing with trees. They do the same thing. They emanate these negative ions. So therefore, when your positive charges are coming in, it immediately just cancels out and neutralizes it. Did that answer your question, Tasha? I, th I think so. I, I just uh, was struggling with, I think you're right. I think it's differences of one's frequency where you're bringing up your vibration. And then the other is the the eons or ions or something like that. So it's kind of a little different, but it's affecting you is what I'm thinking, regardless. Right. If you think about if you're, if you think about if you're clearing cleaning the house and there's a lot of uh, dust or you know whatever in the air, it's hard to really think or focus. And you can think about that as the positive charges in your field. If that dust was completely removed, then you're more able to focus on oh my gosh, those lower vibrations of, you know, I have to clean out the kitty litter or something. And so you go in and you work on those processes of whatever emotional charges you have, a clean out kitty litter, and then that's now gone. So that raises your whole vibration in general. It all works together. And EMFs, I'm not too, are you more savvy about EMFs and how they could affect the body, Stacey? I am not. Um, you know what? I just have honestly never bothered uh, you know when it comes when it comes to negative things and studying and that kind of stuff and not to say that's negative I don't mean it like that I tend to study things that are going to improve me uh, because I can't I can't um, change what's going on over here but I can change what's coming over here and so I don't tend to study that kind of uh, that direction because I can't change what's over there, but I can change what's over here coming this way. So for me, it's uh, finding that counter um, and 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 living in in a in a forward manner. So basically, you work on changing yourself so that your interaction with the external is no is more neutral versus much more charging. Yeah. Yes. Because I, I just, I mean, my thought is, um, you know, like when I had some health issues, somebody said, well, why don't you just keep going to the doctor gives you a diagnosis? Why do I need the diagnosis? Now I get to go, oh, I have blah, blah, blah. Well, I don't have anything. I have good health. I have long life. I have, you know, that diagnosis. I just want to know, um, am I dying tomorrow? So if I am, then I'll just go live a whole bunch of fun. <laughs> no, not really. I'm just teasing. But I mean, so for that's where I am. I don't necessarily need that over there. I need this over here. Um, that is just, that's just an answer, but I don't, that's not the solution. So I'm not going to focus on the answer. I'm going to focus on a solution for whatever it is. So no. And somebody asked me, do I have a website or anything like that? Well, let me just tell you, if you don't know a free spirit, 
<laughs> the answer is no. Because a free spirit like myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get choked up here, guys. I gotta mute myself. A free spirit like myself cannot be responsible for something like that. Let me just tell you. I have a I have a phone and I have a text. <laughs> God, I love you. You're amazing. I'm right there with you. All right, we're gonna take one last question. Um, Liz Wheeler, you've been you've been you know, bringing up your your hand up, up and down. Do you have anything? Or are you fine? Actually, from another podcast, there was references to in in talking about the X forty nine, the Faraday cage mm -hmm. to keep out EMS. Do you have any more to to share on this Faraday cage and? blocking zinc or the zinc blocking copper or should that should I not cross podcast inquiries <laughs> I say I this is what I answer to that okay this is my answer to that now Wendy can answer more but this is my answer to that if you haven't bought your conference ticket you need to <laughs> October the 14th and 15th is conference. And I guarantee you, David is going to dive deep. Conference with this company is not like conference with other companies. It is not a ray, yay, yay, yippee, yay, yay, kick him in the butt. Let's go, go, go. It is very educational. It is very good. I've this will be my third one, and I look forward to it every time. And I say, if you haven't gotten your ticket, get your ticket. You know what? This is where you step out just like I did a few years ago in November and said, I don't know. Oh my goodness. Where's the money? Where's this? You know what? Do it. Believe it. Know it. See it. If you, if you want to be there, you'll be there. If it's about money, you'll have it. Go. Yeah. Uh, it might be the 13th, 14th. Look, Carolyn, I am a free spirit. Y'all better look it up. <laughs> but I that's what I my answer to that question would be you need to come to conference I love that great plug by the way and Next Carol year is my goal I don't know about this year <laughs> and yes Carol it is the October 13th and 14th and Lisa so the life wave has come out and said we have preliminary studies which I don't believe they're released yet but we have preliminary studies that show that, yes, it basically creates a Faraday cage preventing any man-made 5G, in essence, radiation from affecting the body. Now, those studies have not yet been released. However, um, Dr. John Harmon, he has done some videos just with muscle testing and basically being able to show what your body reacts when you're on the phone. The phone is, you know, active a call coming through because that's when the EMFs are released and how the muscle goes weak. And as soon as they put an X49 on them, the muscle is strong, hence showing that it's protecting them from that specific phone. As far as the zinc and anything else, I'm not aware of that, so I can't really comment on that. All right, thank you very much. All right, all right, guys, um, I see here we got um, Harleen, did you wanna say something? And this will be, I keep saying our last one, our last one, but there's some such great points here. Harleen, you wanna say hello? Yes, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask Stacy about meditation because every time I try to meditate I fall asleep and I don't know I don't I think well that's not doing me any good so. you know what keep doing it even if you fall asleep you know what I I asked God I said you know what I I love to sleep let me just tell you I love to sleep and so I said God I love to meditate and I would love to meditate even when I'm sleeping. And so if I fall asleep, let's meditate together. And I gave him permission to use my time of meditation, whether it's me, I, me sleeping or not. And I tell you, I will wake up in the morning and I will have the best meditation through that night. And I will be like, wow. And I used to think they were only dreams, but dreams come and they, they go out. This is like, I participated in something. You know, like I really, meditation is participating. Dream is seeing something and then releasing it. I participated. I will call my friend Ann Sontag and I'll say, girl, last night we talked to this person and this has got, you know, because I'm already seeing what's to come. 
I'm already calling forth what's to come. I'm like, and so anytime in Harleen, you're on my team. So you hear these, anytime I call you guys and say, let's start doing this. Let's, you know, because I've already participated in that meditation and I've already, we've, it's already happened. We just have to come to it. We're just yeah. going to it. Is, is meditation and soaking the same thing? Somewhat. Somewhat. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't. For me, meditation, soaking is releasing everything in me and it just allowing myself. So it, it, it could be to somebody else. I mean, when I so when I do soaking, I just release everything in me, every part of my being, and I just almost allow myself to float physically, mm -hmm. surrender, like float. and surrender. That's a good word, and just completely release. Meditation is I'm going in and I'm participating and I'm and I'm creating already what's to come. Okay. Yeah. And, and Harleen, when I, when I way back when, you know, when I first learned meditation and this also goes out to you, Laura, that when they always said, you know, if you fall asleep, because that's what you need. And just like Stacy said, you will still be receiving. And Laura, same thing with you. If you just feel like crying, it's because there's a lot for you to release. So embrace yourself, have compassion for yourself in that time. And just say, okay, I'm just going to work on releasing because that's your emotional body saying, I want to be heard and I'm containing so much. I need to let it go. And so it's a gift to allow yourself to cry and just allow those tears to flow because those are sacred tears. Um, for those of you that are interested in meditation, but have a hard time because of the monkey mind and they've never tried it before, I recommend a six phase meditation. Now, he has several different ones out. This is a guided meditation. For some people, a male voice, mm, nope, doesn't work. Then keep looking. There's so many out there. You know, find somebody that you like what they say. You like the tone of their voice, male or female, maybe music behind it. Um, I was always taught that if you do do a guided meditation, always put your own music like on the TV while you're listening to this meditation. Because after a while you'll be able to just turn on that music and your brain knows it's time to meditate and be quiet. And that can go bring you back more into that receiving meditation where you're having that communion with God. I got the six faith meditation, but I didn't see who it was. It's the same guy. It's vision. Lakiani. He just has a whole bunch. So you just have to look around. This is his first one. I personally like this one because oh, to me, he talks too much. But when I first was starting, that was really good because my brain was talking too much. And so I heard him, but then he has others where he's a little more quiet, they're a little more spacious, et cetera. So just, you know, feel it out. That's, that's just an option. And I'm sure Stacy will have some good options too for you since you guys are connected. Guys, I'm gonna bring this to a close. Um, let me see if I missed anything. Um, YouTube has great meditation. Yep, with sub for the subconscious. Beautiful, soaking up, absolutely. All right, I think we're good. I have to go pick up my daughter. She, Eve is at the city college going, I know you're talking to Stacy, but Stacy, <laughs> she said, Stacy, I love you, but I need to be picked up. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell Eve we love her too. <laughs> so, all right, guys, thank you, Stacy. I know everybody loved every second of your words and your wisdom and your story. Thank you so much and trust thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, guys. Take care. Have a great day. Thanks, y'all. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye-bye.